Do you know what stained glass is? Did you know that stained glass has been around for thousands of years? Wealthy ancient Romans used stained glass to make their drinking glasses. And stained glass as we know it today was actually descended from glass beads that originated in North Africa thousands of years ago. Stained glass is very common in places like churches and other religious buildings. But in more modern times like today, it has even started to become very popular in people's homes. There was one very talented man who was a major influence in the art of stained glass. His name is Douglas Phillips. Douglas Phillips was born in 1922 and was a stained glass designer, artist, and craftsman. After graduating from design school, he started working a job for a small stained glass studio. Shortly after that, he decided to go out and set up a studio on his own and had great success. In fact, he was the only African-American stained glass window designer to have a major stained glass studio in the United States between 1952 and 1995. Most traditional stained glass designs were very strict and rigid and showed a lot of straight lines in the designs. Douglas Phillips' window designs were highly dynamic. He used a lot of curving, swirling lines that show flowing movement. He both influenced and modernized the art of stained glass. Douglas understood how to tell stories in glass. He was also a jazz singer and guitarist, so music played a central role in his life and his art. When we look at his work, we can see the rhythms of jazz swirling in his art. Before Phillips put his stained glass pieces together, he would often paint them to get the design and color scheme down on paper just to make sure they looked right. So his paintings will be the inspiration for our project today. Remember, he used a lot of curving, flowing lines in his work, so we're going to start with some of those lines in our design. When you overlap different kinds of lines, whether it's straight or curving lines, you will create a lot of interesting new spaces and shapes. Inside those spaces is where we will add some color. So you're going to start out with a Sharpie first, and we're going to start drawing some of those free-flowing, dynamic lines that show a lot of movement. These free-flowing lines are called organic lines. Organic means it's influenced by something in nature. Um, so these lines are free-flowing, they show movement, and they're influenced by things like leaves, water, um, seaweed, things found in nature. So after you draw your organic lines, then it's time to start adding some shapes. And as you can see, I'm crossing over those lines with my shapes. And I'm also going over some more of my lines with a little bit of extra Sharpie to thicken them up and make them nice and thick and dark. Some of them I'm going to leave thinner. Some of them I'm going to make them thicker um, because Douglas Phillips used a combination of thick and thinner lines in his work. So I'm going to try to do that as well. Okay, when your painting is done, let's talk about cleanup. Okay, if you are in the classroom, this needs to go over to the drying rack along with your placemat. If you're at home, find somewhere flat and hard for it to sit overnight. If you're in the classroom, please take your brush and your water cup or your water bowl to the sink and your paint set belongs on the counter. We will move on to the second part of these Douglas Phillips inspired works of art next class.